I had to do a scene where I had to be with the lion. I said, nothing doing, I'll stand outside and watch you. He went into the tent and put his head inside of the lion's mouth. He turned to me, he said, you see how simple it is? A week later, the real lion, lion tamer who worked in the show did the same trick and the lion bit his head off. Isn't that a lovely story, boys and girls? <laughs> Burt Lancaster is a name synonymous with Hollywood's golden age. This superstar of the silver screen's legacy carries himself through generations. Like any other star from this era of Hollywood, Lancaster has a fascinating life full of awards. But despite all that glamour, there have always been rumors and dark secrets. From his early days as an acrobat to becoming one of the most celebrated actors of his time, Lancaster's journey was as captivating as the characters he portrayed. Join us as we look into this icon's life and career, exploring the triumphs, challenges, an enduring impact of a true Hollywood legend. Oh yeah, and let's not forget the rumors and dark secrets. We will dive into those as well. His early years. Burton Stephen Lancaster, born on November 2nd, 1913, in the vibrant neighborhood of East Harlem, New York City, emerged from simple beginnings to become one of the most celebrated actors of his time. Better known as Burt Lancaster, this all-American boy would become a heartthrob in no time. Let's start from the beginning, though. After leaving Ireland, his family looked for a new home and opportunity in the United States. These humble beginnings showcase the typical American dream story many people had at the time. Growing up in a working-class household, young Bert found an enduring friendship in Nick Cravat, a bond that would shape both their lives. Their shared love for performance ignited in local theater productions. Eventually, they made their dream come true and joined the circus. Together, they mastered acrobatics, becoming a dynamic duo, Lang and Cravat, captivating audiences with their gravity-defying stunts for the K Brothers Circus during the 1930s. But circus life wasn't always fun and games. They struggled to make enough money so they tried performing in other places like burlesque clubs. Things got even wilder when Bert posed without clothes for magazines. Coming from such a conservative and orderly household, that definitely rocked the boat a bit. But hey, you do what you have to, right? Despite his success in the circus arena, fate intervened when Lancaster found himself injured. This injury sharply ended his acrobatic career. Undeterred, he embarked on a journey of self-discovery, trying his hand at a wide range of odd jobs, including stints as a singing waiter. During this time, Bert grappled with what his future held. In 1943, amidst the backdrop of World War II, Lancaster enlisted in the U.S. Army, a decision that would not only shape his character, but also pave the way for his future. Assigned to the Army's 21st Special Services Division, he found himself traveling through Italy, not as a soldier in the traditional sense, but as an entertainer tasked with uplifting the spirits of the troops. He brought laughter and joy to soldiers' hearts alongside his fellow soldiers. His time in the military not only showcased his artistic talents, but also underscored his unwavering dedication to serving his country. Lancaster's contributions extended beyond the stage as he took part in various military missions, embodying the valor and resilience emblematic of the American spirit. Upon his honorable discharge in 1945, Lancaster found himself at a crossroads. It was during this period that fate intervened. He had a chance run-in with a famous Hollywood producer. Spotted in an elevator in 1945, Lancaster's innate charisma and raw talent grabbed the producer's attention. He then asked Burt to come out for an audition for a Broadway show he was working on. This turned out to be the beginning of Lancaster's new adventure into acting. He secured the role in the Broadway production of A Sound of Hunting. While the show failed to garner commercial success, Lancaster's performance caught the attention of Harold Hecht, a prominent Hollywood agent who recognized his star potential. With an offer too enticing to refuse, Lancaster made the decision to relocate to Los Angeles, embarking on a journey that would culminate in cinematic renown. It was a bold leap of faith, 
fueled by ambition and propelled by a relentless drive to carve out his legacy in the annals of Hollywood history. His rise to fame. Before we take a look at the rumors, let's take a look at his remarkable rise to fame. Armed with his piercing blue eyes, winning smile, resonant voice, and an athletic physique that commanded attention, Lancaster made an indelible mark on the silver screen. Upon his arrival in Hollywood, Lancaster's path to stardom was paved by a fortuitous encounter with producer Hal B. Wallace. Impressed by Lancaster's raw talent and undeniable charisma, Wallace wasted no time in offering him a non-exclusive eight-movie contract, catapulting Lancaster into the spotlight. In 1946, Lancaster landed his breakthrough role as the lead in The Killers, opposite the enchanting Ava Gardner. The film garnered both commercial success and critical acclaim, propelling Lancaster and Gardner to the pinnacle of stardom. Subsequently, in 1948, Lancaster showcased his acting prowess alongside Barbara Stanwyck in the acclaimed film Sorry Wrong Number, solidifying his status in Hollywood. However, Lancaster's ascent to stardom was no mere stroke of luck. It was all thanks to years of dedication and hard work. Over the next several years, Lancaster graced the silver screen in over 85 films spanning a wide range of genres, including dramas, romances, adventures, war epics, and westerns, leaving an indelible imprint on each role he portrayed. True to his promise, Lancaster, alongside his mentor Harold Hecht, established their own production company, Norma Productions. Their inaugural venture, the critically acclaimed thriller Kiss the Blood Off My Hands, starring Lancaster and Joan Fontaine, showcased their burgeoning talents as producers. The 1950s heralded a golden era for Lancaster, marked by the transformation of Norma Productions into Hecht Hill Lancaster, the epitome of success and innovation in Hollywood. Lancaster's on-screen collaborations with luminaries such as Deborah Kerr in From Here to Eternity and his directorial debut in The Kentuckian underscored his multifaceted talents. In a testament to his prowess both in front of and behind the camera, Lancaster's production company clinched the prestigious Academy Award for Best Picture for their film Marty, solidifying his status as a Hollywood heavyweight. Moreover, Lancaster's stellar performances in The Rainmaker opposite Katherine Hepburn and Sweet Smell of Success showcased his versatility and range as an actor. The culmination of Lancaster's illustrious career came in 1960 with his riveting portrayal of the charismatic yet morally ambiguous Elmer Gantry in the film of the same name. His mesmerizing performance garnered critical acclaim and commercial success earning him both the Academy Award and the Golden Globe for Best Actor. The ensuing decade saw Lancaster tackle a myriad of complex roles, from a Nazi war criminal in Judgment at Nuremberg to a prison convict and bird expert in The Birdman of Alcatraz. His willingness to delve into diverse characters showcased his fearlessness as an actor and cemented his legacy as one of Hollywood's most versatile talents. Amidst his cinematic triumphs, Lancaster's off-screen persona was marked by an aura of intensity and unpredictability. Tales of his confrontations and volatile temper added layers to his enigmatic persona, solidifying his reputation as a formidable presence both on and off the screen. Burt's Interesting Personal Life Burt Lancaster's legacy extends far beyond film. He was a man of profound intellect, wit, and unwavering social conscience. Renowned for his passionate advocacy for civil rights and social justice, Lancaster utilized his celebrity platform to champion causes close to his heart, from racial equality to environmental conservation. While Burt Lancaster was widely recognized for his activism in civil rights, anti-war efforts, and political causes, he also demonstrated a strong commitment to environmental conservation. Lancaster was ahead of his time in recognizing the importance of preserving the natural world for future generations. In the 1970s and 1980s, Lancaster became increasingly vocal about environmental issues, advocating for the protection of wildlife habitats, clean air, and clean water. 
He used his celebrity platform to raise awareness about environmental degradation and the need for sustainable practices. One notable example of Lancaster's environmental activism was his opposition to offshore drilling. He spoke out against plans to drill for oil off the coast of California, warning of the potential environmental risks and advocating for alternative energy sources. Additionally, Lancaster was a supporter of national parks and conservation efforts. He lent his voice to campaigns to preserve wilderness areas and protect endangered species. Lancaster passionately supported civil rights, using his platform to speak out against racial inequality and discrimination. He actively participated in marches and fundraisers, lending his voice to the fight for equal rights and opportunities for all. In the realm of personal relationships, Lancaster's life was marked by three significant marriages. His first union was with June Ernst, a talented trapeze acrobat from 1935 until their separation in the late 1930s. The exact date of their divorce remains unclear, with some reports suggesting it occurred as late as 1946, paving the way for Lancaster's second marriage to Norma Anderson. Norma Anderson was working as a stenographer in Italy when she got a surprise chance to perform for the soldiers. She was nervous, but she couldn't help noticing a very handsome guy turning pages for the pianist. That guy was Bert Lancaster. She asked a friend to set them up on a date and they fell in love. They began to date not long after and found themselves returning to the States together. Something scandalous happened while Bert was making the movie The Killers. Bert would find out that Norma was going to have a baby. Rumor has it that this was quite the pickle, and instead of talking to her about it, he decided to save up money to stop the pregnancy. But Norma didn't want that because of her beliefs. Bert was worried. He was becoming famous, but having a baby out of wedlock could cause big problems for him. So he and the movie studio came up with a plan. The two would secretly get married in Arizona and said Norma was a widow whose husband died in the war. This tricky situation made Bert think he should make his own movies and not rely on the studio. Though the wedding seemed to be unplanned, the two shared a deep commitment to political activism. Their marriage, blessed with five children, endured until their separation in 1966 and subsequent divorce in 1969. Following the dissolution of his second marriage, Lancaster embarked on a relationship with Jackie Bone, a hairdresser, marking a new chapter in his personal life. However, the relationship was tumultuous and fraught with challenges, eventually leading to their separation. In 1990, Lancaster found companionship once again in Susan Martin, whom he married until his passing in 1994 underscoring his unwavering commitment to love and companionship throughout his life. Sexuality and Affairs During the time Bert was married to Norma Anderson, some people said he wasn't always faithful to her. There were rumors about him being close with lots of makeup girls and assistants on movie sets. Some stories even said he was with famous actress Marlene Dietrich. Whenever women met Bert, they seemed to really like him. But one woman, Shelley Winters, said she had more than just a little crush on him. In her book, she wrote that they had a two-year love story while Bert was still married to Norma. Bert never talked about it himself, but another actor, Farley Granger, wrote in his book that he and Bert once saved Shelley's life when she took too many pills and alcohol. But here's where things get dramatic. Shelley found out that Bert's wife was going to have a baby and she realized Bert was being unfaithful to her, with his own wife. This upset her so much that she ended their relationship. But if Shelley believed all the stories about Bert, she had even more to worry about. For instance, in 1960, there was a big scandal about a party at a Hollywood mansion. The party was supposed to be for gay men, and it was very secretive. But somehow, photographers took pictures of the guests having all-male parties. They said Bert was there along with other famous people. Rumors had been floating around because he was well known for his charisma and charm. This charm often translated into on-screen chemistry with male and female co-stars. So, 
Some biographers and Hollywood insiders have suggested that Lancaster may have had relationships with both men and women. Lancaster's private life was fiercely guarded, and he never publicly addressed questions about his sexuality or potential affairs. However, his close friendships with actors such as Nick Cravat and Montgomery Clift, both of whom were rumored to be gay, have fueled speculation about his sexual orientation. His later years, the 1980s marked a significant chapter in Burt Lancaster's illustrious career, characterized by both triumphs and challenges. Despite grappling with health issues, Lancaster continued to leave a mark on the world of cinema, showcasing his versatility and enduring talent. In 1980, Lancaster delivered a tour de force performance alongside Susan Sarandon in the critically acclaimed film Atlantic City, directed by Louis Mal. The movie achieved widespread praise and earned five Oscar nominations, including Best Picture and a coveted Best Actor nomination for Lancaster, a testament to his enduring appeal and formidable acting prowess. However, Lancaster's career trajectory was disrupted in June 1983 when he suffered a heart attack, which ended with him having an emergency quadruple bypass surgery. As a result of his health struggles, Lancaster had to give up quite a few roles in major motion pictures, including Kiss of the Spider Woman, Maria's Lovers, Gorky Park, and Firestarter. Despite these setbacks, Lancaster's resilience and determination remained unwavering. Throughout the decade, Lancaster continued to take on roles, but in supporting and character roles. He appeared in a diverse array of films, including Local Hero, The Osterman Weekend, Little Treasure, and Tough Guys, where he reunited with his longtime friend and collaborator, Kirk Douglas. Notably, Lancaster's portrayal of the enigmatic former baseball player, Dr. Moonlight Graham, in the beloved classic Field of Dreams, garnered widespread acclaim. His performance resonated with audiences and critics alike, reaffirming Lancaster's enduring legacy as a masterful storyteller. As the decade drew to a close, Lancaster continued to showcase his versatility. He lent his talents to television projects, including the TV miniseries Barnum, where he perfectly portrayed the main character. In the realm of cinema, Lancaster remained a stalwart presence delivering memorable performances in films such as Catalani and Little Britches, The Skin, Marco Polo, and Rocket Gibraltar. Despite transitioning into character roles, Lancaster's charisma and screen presence remained, captivating audiences with his portrayals and commanding performances. The 1980s also saw Lancaster venture into international collaborations, including the German TV production Fathers and Sons, A German Tragedy, and the Italian film Control, showcasing his enduring global appeal and willingness to embrace diverse storytelling. As the decade drew to a close, Lancaster continued to defy expectations, delivering standout performances in many different projects. In 1991, Lancaster's final curtain call came with his poignant portrayal in the TV miniseries separate but equal, alongside Sidney Poitier, encapsulating his remarkable career spanning nearly five decades. Activism and Political Intrigue Beyond his personal affairs, Lancaster's political conviction shaped his public persona, earning him both admiration and scrutiny. Lancaster passionately supported civil rights, using his platform to speak out against racial inequality and discrimination. He actively participated in marches and fundraisers, lending his voice to the fight for equal rights and opportunities for all. While Burt Lancaster was widely recognized for his activism in civil rights, anti-war efforts, and political causes, he also demonstrated a strong commitment to environmental conservation. Lancaster was ahead of his time in recognizing the importance of preserving the natural world for future generations. In the 1970s and 1980s, Lancaster became increasingly vocal about environmental issues, advocating for the protection of wildlife habitats, clean air, and clean water. He used his celebrity platform to raise awareness about environmental degradation and the need for sustainable practices. Additionally, Lancaster was a supporter of national parks and conservation efforts. 
He lent his voice to campaigns to preserve wilderness areas and protect endangered species. Lancaster's opposition to the Vietnam War further solidified his status as a champion of peace and justice. He lent his support to anti-war initiatives and campaigned for political candidates who shared his vision for a better world. In the face of adversity, Lancaster remained steadfast in his beliefs, even earning a place on President Richard Nixon's infamous enemies list for his outspoken views. Undeterred, Lancaster continued to lend his voice to causes he deemed worthy, from advocating against the death penalty to raising awareness about the AIDS epidemic during the height of its stigma. Despite his towering presence in Hollywood, Lancaster fiercely guarded his privacy, shunning the spotlight in favor of a more introspective existence. Yet his impact on the industry and society at large was undeniable leaving an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of those who crossed his path. Beyond the camera. But he wasn't just successful in front of the camera. He had a lot of success behind the camera, too. Teaming up with Harold Hecht, Lancaster ventured into film production by establishing Norma Productions, a bold endeavor that would redefine his legacy in Hollywood. Their maiden venture, Kiss the Blood Off My Hands, 1948, directed by Norman Foster and starring Lancaster alongside Joan Fontaine, marked the inception of Norma Productions' cinematic journey. And boy, did it cause a big fuss right from the start. The movie's name was kind of scary. Kiss the blood off my hands. Gross, right? Some small towns in the US and even places like Canada and Australia thought it was too scary for their theaters. So, Burt changed the name to The Unafraid for those places. And you know what? It did pretty well at the box office, even though it wasn't a huge hit. Continuing their collaboration, Lancaster and Hecht delved deeper into the noir genre with Criss Cross, 1949, a gripping tale of love and betrayal directed by Robert Siodmak. Lancaster's magnetic performance captivated audiences cementing his status as a versatile leading man. Undeterred by the challenges of film production, Norma Productions inked a lucrative deal with Warner Brothers, heralding a new chapter of success for Lancaster. The swashbuckling adventure The Flame and the Arrow, 1950, infused with Lancaster's circus skills, emerged as a commercial triumph, catapulting him to new heights of stardom and redefining his cinematic persona. Emboldened by their initial success, Norma Productions expanded its repertoire with diverse offerings, including the comedy Mr. 880 in 1950 and the Western Vengeance Valley in 1951, showcasing Lancaster's versatility as an actor across various genres. The evolution of Norma Productions into Hecht Lancaster Productions marked a significant milestone in Lancaster's career. Their collaboration yielded a string of successes, including the swashbuckling adventure The Crimson Pirate, 1952, co-starring Lancaster's longtime friend Nick Cravat. Though he was back with his buddy and had a name that didn't keep the rumor mill and controversy from spreading. When Burt Lancaster was filming The Crimson Pirate in 1952, he was causing a lot of trouble on set. He was bossy, rude, and just not very nice to be around. Even the crew complained about his bad language. But something even scarier was happening to Burt's career. In the 1950s, there were people in Hollywood who were afraid of communism. They didn't like certain things said in movies that they thought sounded too much like communism. In The Crimson Pirate, Burt's character said some lines that the FBI didn't like. They thought it sounded like he was supporting communism. Because Burt was both an actor and a producer of the movie, they started watching him closely, thinking he might be a communist. This label stayed with him for a long time, even after he passed away. Transitioning to United Artists, Lancaster and Hecht continued their winning streak with a string of successes, including the Western epics Apache, 1954, and Vera Cruz, 1954, both directed by Robert Aldrich and co-starring screen legend Gary Cooper. Their collaboration reached new heights with the critically acclaimed drama Marty, 
1955, directed by Delbert Mann and starring Ernest Borgnine. The film's unprecedented success garnered widespread acclaim, earning accolades at prestigious award ceremonies and solidifying Hecht Lancaster production status as a powerhouse in the industry. As the decade progressed, Lancaster's collaboration with Hecht yielded diverse projects, including the Western classic Gunfight at the OK Corral, 1957, directed by John Sturgis and co-starring Kirk Douglas. Lancaster's indelible mark on the silver screen continued to resonate with audiences, transcending boundaries and redefining cinematic storytelling. Amidst their unparalleled success, Hecht Lancaster Productions faced challenges, including Hill's departure from the company in 1960. Lancaster's indomitable spirit and creative vision endured despite this setback, leading to collaborations with emerging talents such as Sidney Pollack and John Frankenheimer. As Lancaster's career evolved, so did his production endeavors. Forming Norland Productions with Roland Kibbe, Lancaster ventured into uncharted territory with projects like The Scalp Hunters, 1968, and Castle Keep, 1969, highlighting his enduring passion for storytelling and innovation in cinema. Despite the industry's ebbs and flows, Lancaster's legacy endures as a testament to his unparalleled talent, resilience, and unwavering commitment to his craft. Legacy and the End of a Legend Burt Lancaster's remarkable journey through life was not without its health challenges. Despite his robust physique, his lifelong habit of smoking eventually took its toll. In January 1980, Lancaster's health took a serious turn when he faced complications during what should have been a routine gallbladder operation. The ordeal left him fighting for his life, spending two days in intensive care as he battled to recover. Just a few years later, in 1983, Lancaster's cardiovascular system bore the brunt of his smoking habit when he experienced not one but two heart attacks due to clogged arteries. Lancaster pressed on with his career in public activism despite these health scares, displaying his trademark resilience and determination. However, as Lancaster entered his later years, his health continued to deteriorate. In late November 1990, tragedy struck once again when he suffered a debilitating stroke. The stroke left him partially paralyzed and robbed him of his ability to speak effectively bringing an end to his illustrious acting career. The final blow came in the early hours of October 20th, 1994, when Lancaster succumbed to his third heart attack. With his passing, Hollywood lost one of its most charismatic and talented stars, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire audiences today. Despite his health struggles, Lancaster's contributions to cinema remain unparalleled. His body of work, spanning decades, continues to captivate audiences with its depth and complexity. From his early roles in film noir classics to his later performances in iconic movies like Field of Dreams and Atlantic City, Lancaster's talent and charisma shone brightly on the silver screen. In recognition of his enduring impact on Hollywood, Lancaster was honored by the American Film Institute as the 19th greatest male star of classic Hollywood cinema. His star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame serves as a testament to his enduring legacy, reminding future generations of his remarkable talent and contributions to the world of film. In May 2013, on what would have been Lancaster's centennial birthday, the Film Society of Lincoln Center paid tribute to his remarkable career with a special screening of 12 of his most celebrated films. The event served as a fitting reminder of Lancaster's lasting influence on the world of cinema and his place among the pantheon of Hollywood legends. What do you think about Burt? Make sure to leave a comment and let us know. While you're down there, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.